Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. So just a few months ago, I made a video about the high level significant weather frog chart, and then promptly the aviationweather.gov site started showing the updated version of the high level sig weather frog chart. So here's a quick update overview on this chart and how to read the new version of the chart. So you can find it on aviationweather.gov. Um, once you do tools, you can do decision support graphics from the menu. Then just click the significant weather, high level, then click whatever hour you're looking for. A is the area that is North America and South America. So this is the overview of what you're going to see when you do that. First of all, we always want to know the legend and the issue time of the forecast. This is a forecast product. You can see that it is from flight level 250 to flight level 600. So anything that this chart says is below the chart is below flight level 250. Also, we can see that it was issued uh, basically 00 UTC on the 4th of February and the 24-hour forecast valid at 00 on the 5th of February. They also have a little disclaimer, cumulonimbus activity implies thunderstorms, hail, moderate to severe turbulence, ice. Okay. And you should check sigmets and other things if you want to look up volcanic activity information. The big change that you might notice on this chart, uh, the colors obviously changed. They have eliminated little areas of tropopause heights. Okay. But they have added contours for the tropopause. And you also see an addition on the side where they've actually got numbered areas trying to tell you about turbulent areas because I think what happened was there was too many things on a chart and people couldn't see them. So um, let me actually zoom into the chart and we'll just talk about some of the areas. The cities that are labeled in the U.S. are still the same. We still have Kansas City for K, C for Chicago, D for Dallas, and for New York. They didn't change that. The tropopause contours, here's an example of one, three, flight level 350. Here's another example of one, flight level 300. Here's one over the southern part of the United States and the Gulf of Mexico, flight level 450. So that is trying to show you contour heights of the tropopause. They have eliminated the other little tropopause heights from this chart. If you want to know about turbulence in a certain area, and let's just, for easy looking at this, let's look at area 8. You just find the corresponding turbulent mark on the side menu, and this says that we have moderate turbulence expected between flight level 260 and flight level 320 in that small area number 8. If I wanted to know about any other area, I could just match it up. The only other thing to note really on the areas, um, let's just take a quick look at area number one. In area number one, I'm not going to geographically find it on the map, but this is for more than just moderate turbulence. Here we're looking at severe turbulence. Uh, in the area of somewhere below the chart, that's what XXX means, to flight level 360. And notice it also says this turbulence, anything that they have numbered with this, is either clear air turbulence or orographic, so some kind of terrain action, mountain wave activity. They are not going to put turbulence marks on areas where there was cumulonimbus activity. Cumulonimbus activity is found in these red ha bubbled areas, so I'm draw a little arrow pointing at this area here off the Atlantic coast, pretty far out in the Atlantic, occasional cumulonimbus from somewhere below the chart to flight level 340. So in that area, that's what that's trying to tell about, which actually that symbology is just like the old version. Volcanic activity is still marked by um, little volcanic symbols, and you can match them up. Uh, it's a, a little bit unclear. I don't love some of these because they don't have an arrow showing you what volcano they're talking about, but that is what they're talking about with the volcanic activity. And then you have jet stream locations of the jet stream core. For example, this one that is currently over the United States, 
We have the jet stream core is supposed to be predicted at flight level 350 to 230 is the bottom of the jet stream and it goes somewhere above the chart. So it's somewhere above flight level 600. In order to read the jet stream speed, it's just like it was before on the chart. The pennants, these two are each 50. So we have 50, 100, and then the longer marks are 10. So 110, 120, 130. And you also will see on this chart a lot of the little two line things. This is indicating a change of 20 knots of the jet stream speed. But it's it's too short, so that there's not enough room on the line to mark all the pennants right there. So that's why they just make the two dash mark. It means it's a change of 20 knots. And that's pretty much it on this area chart. Um, the only other thing I guess I can point out is that if you have an area that is more than just moderate turbulence, like area three here, they seem to be coloring those in a little darker gradient of gray. So that might help you identify areas of greater than just moderate turbulence that's being forecast on this chart. Hope this was helpful. If you liked what you saw, like and subscribe, check out my other content, and have a fantastic day from Aviation 101 with Laura.